My goodness, my hair is long. Ah! How's it going, everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. And yes, I do need a freaking haircut. My goodness. Those of you who have been subscribed to my channel for a long time know I've always had pretty long hair, but this is getting out of control. I'm not used to this. So let's talk Atlanta. Brad Keselowski got the win. Woo. Kevin Harvick blew it again. And uh, a lot of pit road penalties, so stuff to talk about. Tough day for a lot of big names, specifically from the Gibbs camp. Like I said, many drivers had pit road penalties. Several drivers had just their cars just break on them, and uh, it was a... Uh, it was kind of a mess, or at least as messy as it can be without actually really having any wrecks. Kevin Harvick won the first two stages and seemed set to sweep the race and win all three. Obviously that didn't happen. Kyle Larson and Brad Keselowski ended up battling for the win. Keselowski won that battle and got his first win of the season. Kyle Larson finished second to continue his hot start to the season. Matt Kenseth finished third after a coming back from two pit road speeding penalties. He was, he was the only Gibbs car that showed any real sign of life all race long. Casey Kane continues a strong start to the season as well, got fourth. And Chase Elliott, who was probably the best Hendrick car consistently throughout the day, got a top five as well. Kurt Busch, Daytona 500 champion, finished seventh, so he's also off to a good start. Stuart Haas Racing, all in all, looks like the team to beat right now. Which, if you had told me that at the beginning of the season, I would have probably been a little skeptical, mainly because that team obviously has a new driver and Clint Boyer now there, and they had to make the switch from Chevy all the way to Ford, Big major changes. We saw how when Joe Gibbs originally switched to Toyotas about a decade ago, it took them a while to find speed. But that has not been the case for Stuart Haas switching over to Fords. Like I said, Kurt Busch won the Daytona 500. Harvick should have won here at Atlanta. The Stuart Haas Fords have been pretty dominating. Even Clint Boyer blew a tire and smacked the wall, had tons of damage. I, usually that car I thought would go to the garage. Nope, he kept it out there and finished 11th. So coming into this year, I, and I'm sure many others, figured Stuart Haas would at least take a couple months maybe to kind of get used to it, maybe it wouldn't be quite as good as usual. Harvick, Bush, Boyer, even Danica had a good run at Daytona going. They are proving us all wrong. The rookies, once again, didn't impress too much after a really rough Daytona. Eric Jones, on the other hand, did have, he ran top 10 most of the day. Eric Jones was the most impressive of the rookies. Daniel Suarez was lapsed down early on, didn't have any chance of coming back from it. Ty Dillon, I think he finished 15th, which is a solid finish for that 13 team, but again, was kind of a non-factor. The RCR cars, both Ryan Newman and Austin Dillon, seemed to have decent runs. Both had top 10 cars, were both running in the top 10. When they both had electrical issues, it seemed like a battery messed up or something. In both of their cases, their cars just completely shut off midway you know, during a green flag run. I got my little index card this week with some major talking points, so let's jump into it. I'm actually somewhat organized this show. So I should start out with the biggest storyline from the race, and it came in the last 15 laps. Kevin Harvick, who dominated much of the race, led almost 300 laps, I believe, got caught speeding, as many did, on the final pit stops. And this just leads me to having to talk about it. I've mentioned it on the show in the past during the chase, but I feel like it's gotta, gotta say it again. It really seems like the only team that can consistently beat that four car team is themselves. And, and I know it sounds cliche to say it like that, but I mean, I sound like a high school football coach, like nobody can beat you but yourself, you know? But it's, it's, it's becoming more and more the truth. There was a stretch from last year to the year before where Kevin Harvick like led the series in second place finishes. He had like 20 something, it was a ridiculous number of second place finishes. I mean, I think it's safe to say that, that four car over the last two plus years now has consistently been the best car week in, week out. Even better than Jimmy Johnson, in my opinion, better than Kyle Busch, better than Keselowski. Kevin Harvick, that four car, since he's gotten to Stuart Haas Racing, he won that championship back in, shoot, 2014. And since then, he's just been consistently, the, I think he's been the best car, best driver every year since then. But one way or another, they always seem to fail. In the past, we've seen it be his pit crew make bad pit stops late or have mis mistakes there, and that's been somewhat common. In this case, it was a driver error or whatever kind of error it was. You know, they've had penalties like that in the past as well, too. They are just living proof right now of how difficult it is to win a NASCAR Cup Series race. Not only do you have to have a good car and a competent driver, but so many things have to go your way. You can't have a poorly timed caution. You can't run over a piece of debris at a bad time. You can't have a pit road thing malfunction or blow an engine or something like that. There's so many things that could go wrong, and you really can't have hardly any of them go wrong if you expect to win a race in this top level. And so even though Kevin Harvick has led more laps than anyone, he's dominated races all over the place, he doesn't have that many wins to show for it. I mean, he's got more wins than most drivers, and he won a championship in 2014, so it's hard to say he hasn't been successful, but honestly, he's been close to winning the championship. He's been the favorite, in my opinion, to win the championship the last three years. And it's super ironic, because before Harvick came to Stuart Haas, he was known as the closer. But honestly, since he's gotten to Stuart Haas, he has been anything but the closer in a lot of these races. That being said, they clearly have one of the best cars. They have a good driver in Kevin Harvick. They're going to be there at the end of the season. They're going to make the chase. They're going to be a championship threat, possibly the favorites. 
I mean, this is just one race, but it's just yet another example in what's kind of bit that team in the butt the last few years. Moving on, the note card. Another major question that came out of this weekend, it was asked throughout the weekend and even afterwards, should Atlanta Motor Speedway be repaved? Currently, it's scheduled to be repaved just later this year, like in a couple months, they're supposed to start repaving it. And now Atlanta Motor Speedway has one of the, if not the oldest track surface in the, on the series, I'm not actually sure there. But for the last several years, Atlanta's been known for being a rough, slick surface that causes the cars to bump a lot, really hard on tires, and it really forces the drivers to take more control. And for that reason, I think most of the drivers have kind of been against repaving it. They like the fact that it's old and rough like that. The fans, I really haven't been able to get a clear consensus of what the fans think, if they think it should be repaved, or if they kind of want it to stay the way it is. I don't, it's hard to tell. And from me, a fan's perspective, I, I'm kind of torn as well. We all know that when they repave one of these mile and a half racetracks like they did Kansas a few years ago, or other tracks, and I know they're scheduled, they're con reconfiguring Texas right now, it, all, it usually results in the track being kind of a one lane, one groove, fast, but still, you know, one lane, one groove racetrack for at least a couple years afterwards. And that doesn't usually result in the best racing. I personally, even though there weren't really any wrecks or cautions or anything like that, I thought the racing in Atlanta was great. The fact that there are multiple lines that could work at different stages and runs, a driver that might fade at the beginning of the run because they really can't work the bottom, could ultimately migrate up to the top and make up time there. And it's kind of fun. You didn't just, you, the drivers, like, like is the point of the whole thing, the drivers had, had a pretty good amount of input into how their car handled. And for that reason, I don't think Atlanta should be repaved. But at the same time, at some point, this track becomes so rough on tires these, car, these drivers could barely go 30 laps before they were begging to come in for four tires. And so that kind of takes away, in my opinion, some of the strategy aspect of NASCAR, which I'm not always a huge fan of, but it definitely adds a second layer to the race. And right now, Atlanta, even if you've run three laps on these tires, you're coming in for four if you if a caution comes out. Like, you just are. There's no, no questions. So if they postpone this repavement for another five or six years, I mean, they're going to have to repave it at some point. That's the truth. We might see drivers pitting after 20 laps. <laughs> I mean, they're going to burn through tires like crazy. So... I don't know. I don't have a strong opinion about it. I leave that up to you guys. Leave your comments. You think Atlanta should be repaved or not? Let me know. You know, maybe NASCAR will see this video and say, oh, maybe we know what the drivers think. What about the fans think? Hmm. I don't know really what all goes into repaving a track. I don't know how much money it costs, really how important it is. I'm not a track person. I don't, I'm not a professional pavement guy. So I don't really know the logistics. It might make total sense to repave the track and they don't really care what anyone says. They're just going to do it anyways. So that's something that'll probably be in the news for at least the next few weeks. And really the last thing I want to hit on in this week's episode is the stage racing. I kind of went on a long rant after the Daytona 500 about how so many people were so against the stage racing after really barely seeing it in action. I thought it was kind of unfair. I thought it was unfair for fans to immediately start hating on something just for the sake of hating on it, I think. I mean, the in the Daytona 500, as I talked about last week, it really didn't make that big of a difference. I didn't think it hurt or helped the racing much at all. It was a, a bad example to like go off of. But that didn't stop fans from pouring out on social media about how much they hated it. Some liked it, for sure, but a lot definitely hated it. But now that we've seen the stage racing implemented at a more average track like Atlanta, the place that we kind of, similar to more tracks on the circuit, I think we have a slightly better feel of how it's going to play out. And to be fair, guys, I still don't have a super strong opinion about it. I mean, I don't hate it. I definitely don't hate it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not yet ready to say that it's the greatest thing ever, but I still think it is a generally good thing. I mean, think about Atlanta. That was a 325-lap race. They didn't have a single caution the first 80 laps. So when that first yellow came out because of the end of the stage, I was kind of relieved. And so for that reason, there are some tracks like Atlanta or like Charlotte or like Pocono or Indianapolis, places where there's really usually very few wrecks, it's nice to have a planned caution every now and then just to restack things up, give people chances to work on their cars, get back from being a lap down, you know, change things up a little bit. And for Kevin Harvick fans who obviously had to see their poor driver just blow it there at the end, at least they get a couple extra bonus points and, you know, they're currently the points leader now because they've been, they were so consistent at Daytona, they had the best car and ran so well for almost the entire race here at, at, uh, at Atlanta. So at least, despite the fact that he screwed it up at the end by such a sm slim error, at least they still have a good points day to show for it. Now, I'm sure there's some traditional fans that'll say, hey, that's not right. He, he sped on pit road. He finished ninth. He should get, only get those points. Like, who cares what he did the rest of the race? But me, a guy who's always kind of liked to reward consistency, as much as I don't really like Kevin Harvick, I got to give it to him that he had the best car. He ran such a great race for 90% of it. He deserves some extra points for that. And so for that reason, I think the stage racing did its job this week. It rewarded consistency, and it broke up what was otherwise going to be a very long slow green flag race. So, you know, 
I think it had its positives. But let me know what you guys think. If some of you still think it's the worst thing ever, all right, tell me why you think that. If some of you think it's the greatest thing ever, tell me why you think that as well. I would be interested to hear. But I think that's about it for this show. This is the third episode of the 2017 season. Really booking along here. It actually feels like it's going by pretty quick, even though I'm only doing it one a week. Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter, at Dex Racing. Links in the description of things like my Patreon. Uh, I've got new out of the groove, like t-shirts and stuff. I didn't hype this up last week, but I've got new out of the groove t-shirts, and I think I have hats or something available also on my like Cafe Press store. That's also in the description as well. So if you want to get one, check one of those things out, that's awesome as well. Tell any of your friends or family or any other NASCAR fans about the show. Get them over here as well if they like racing. Uh, trying to continue to build this, keep this show on the road. But yeah, thanks guys for watching. Las Vegas is this weekend. NASCAR is going west or whatever the heck that is. Uh, so it should be fun. Have a good week, everybody. Have a good weekend. And I'll see you next time. Peace out. Wow. I can honestly eat my own hair right now. I, wow.